Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. But so, um, you have seen that when you had raw data, so you knew that how to find the mean. The formula was of the mean was sigma x over n. Then when you had the frequency distribution, this formula changed into um, sigma fx over sigma f. Then you had the probability distribution. In this probability distribution, you had, oh, come on. In this probability distribution, the formula for the mean that was called E of X, and that was sigma X into the probability X equal to X. Then you guys went on to the binomial distribution. I'm not writing the formulas for the variance right now for these, okay? I'll just write for the binomial, okay? When you have the binomial distribution, let me write here the variance of X. So that was sigma X squared into the probability X equal to X and minus this E of X squared, okay? Okay, when, when you had this binomial distribution, the formula for the E of X, that is NP. And the formula for the variance is NPQ. Now we are onto the uh, geometric distribution, okay? So when you have the geometric distribution, you need to know about two things. Uh, first of all, the E of X is going to be one over P. There is a formula, we're not going to talk about how this is derived, okay? Just remember that the expectation or the expected number of that trial when you will have the success for the first time, that is going to be one over P. And then we also discuss the mode of this distribution, okay? The mode of this data uh, is this distribution is X equal to one, okay? So, uh, this is something that I'll not talk about. You'll just have to rote memorize this, the formula for the uh, expected value of this, uh, that trial, expected number of that trial when the success is going to happen for the first time. I can tell you a bit about this, why the mode is always X equal to one. Mode is basically when you have the raw data or the frequency distribution, here the mode is the one which has the greatest frequency. And when you turn into these, um, towards these probability distributions, the mode is actually the one which has uh, that event, which has the greatest frequency, okay? Uh, if you guys see that, uh, let's say you have a geometric distribution, which is like X is distributed geometrically. And let's say we talk about getting uh, <coughs> a six, okay? So the probability that you get the six on the very first trial, on the very first roll of the die is one over six. The probability that you get the six on the second roll of the die is going to be five over six times one over six. This is five over 36. Similar, similarly for the probability that you get this on the third, um, uh, this uh, on the third trial, that is going to be five over six squared into one over six. The point is that uh, um, more you have the number of trials, the probability of getting that success um, happening the first time gets smaller and smaller. So whatever is your experiment, the probability for anything, any success to happen for the first time will always be the greatest. That is why the mode of a geometric distribution is always going to be X equal to one. So just try to remember these formulas, these two new formulas that E of X is going to be one over P and the mode is always going to be X equal to one for a given geometric distribution. Okay, from here, I'll take you to the book. Okay, and we'll discuss questions from there. Uh, we are here on exercise. Um, you see, this is exercise um, 7C. Um, if you have done, you would try the questions from 7B, you will find these questions really easy, inshallah. Okay, now see, uh, look at this first question. It says, 
given that the discrete random variable X is geometrically distributed with P as 0.2. So it says, um, uh, sorry, we have done this exercise 7C. We have to go to 7D, sorry. Uh, the exercise 7D. Yeah, here we are on the exercise 7D. Yeah, here it is. Okay, it says, given that X is geometrically distributed with the probability of success that is 0 0.36, find the exact value of E of X. So guys, you see that your E of X, as I just told you, that is always E of X is always going to be one over P, okay? And right now in this first question, your P is 0.36. So when you find this E of X, that is gonna be one over 0.36. You can write it as 100 over 36, or you can use a calculator directly. This is, uh, four twenty-fives are, four nines are. So that is the exact value of this. That means uh, two whole seven over nine. So you must know that what does this mean, this E of X? So E of X in this, in case of this geometric distribution means that the, uh, the success, uh, when it has to happen for the first time, that is going to be somewhere like, you know, Obviously you have the discrete values. You can have X equal to two or X equal to three. So this is nearer to the third trial. So most probably when you try this for the third time, this is expected to get the success for the first time. Here look at the second question. It says the random variable Y follows a uh, geometric distribution. Uh, and it says um, probability Y equal to one. But please remember like when you have um, like there is Y is geometrically distributed and here is a success P over here. And when it says probability Y equal to one, so that is simply equal to P, okay? When it is probability Y equal to two, so that would be QP. When it says probability Y equal to three, so that would be Q square P. So for Y equal to one, that is simply going to be P. So uh, it says, it is equal to 0.2. So indirectly we get that this P is actually 0.2. Then it says, find this E of Y. So guys, E of Y is one over P. That is one over 0.2. And that is going to be five. Okay, guys? Similarly, if you guys look at um, maybe third question. Hmm? Look at this third question, guys. It says, sorry, uh, we have, um, mm, it's, it, we are given that um, S is geometrically distributed with this P and E of S is four and a half, okay? So please see that E of S, we, you, you must know that is one over P, okay? And that is given as nine over two. So this means that your P is going to be two over nine, okay? And then it says, find the probability that uh, this S is equal to two. So that is basically going to be QP. So if your P is two over nine, your Q is going to be one minus two over nine, and that is seven over nine. So this is seven over nine times two over nine, that is 14 over 81. Okay. Yes, Pacho, question number four. Would you like to try them or I should do some more questions. Let me do this fifth question and then this will be up to you people how much you try them, okay? Um, now, I, you, you can read this question number four in the meanwhile, I change the color of the screen here. Um, yeah, read this question number five, in fact. Yeah, question number five. Okay, if you see this fifth question, guys, it says, uh, in this fifth question we have, let X be the number of times an ordinary fair die is rolled up to and including the roll on which the first six is obtained. So uh, the probability for getting a six is basically one over six. So we have X as geometrically distributed with the probability of success that is one over six. It says find E of X. So E of X, you must now learn this by heart, that is one over P, okay? So one over one over six, this is going to be six. That is your E of X. Okay. This mean, this actually means that this is going to, uh, the expected 
uh, number of throw or the roll of the die when six would be coming for the first time, that is the sixth throw. This E of X means the expected number of the throw when the six comes for the first time is going to be the sixth throw, okay? And in the, then it says, evaluate the probability that X is greater than E of X. So when it says like this, this actually means when it says uh, probability X is greater than E of X, we have just calculated this E of X. That actually means that the X is greater than six, okay? But to find this probability. So guys, you see that we are using the number line for this. So he's actually asking for this, that you know your uh, X is more than six, okay? So more than this, this is going up to infinity. So it, it's easier to find the probability of uh, the part, which is before, before that, okay? So can I say probability X is greater than six is same as one minus the probability X is less than or equal to six? Yes or no? Hmm? But so, you forgot your yesterday's class, probability X is more than six is one minus probability X is less than or equal to six. Yeah, I need your confirmation. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, Peter. Now this one minus probability X is less than or equal to six can be written as Q raised to power six. Yes. So this is going to be, if your P is one over six, your Q is five over six. So this is going to be five over six raised to power six. Is this clear to you? Why this is Q raised to power six? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, but so I am just going to finish my video here. Okay, and now it's your time to try these questions. Let me show you the question that you people are required to try. This is all your exercise. This is 7D, okay? Once uh, you better try this up to the seventh question, okay? And you must have done your exercise, which is the 7B up to the question number 12, okay? That is 7C up to the, uh, this, um, up to this question number 12. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much.